Okay, so welcome back. Um, this is going to be a fairly brief video where we're going to talk about pulse width modulation. Now, you may have heard that term before, and maybe you're not quite sure what it is, so we're going to give a visual simulation of pulse width modulation, explain what it is and what it's used for. Now, um, this is going to be fairly basic. If you want some more information on pulse width modulation and how you might use it with real-world equipment like a solar photovoltaic inverter system, I've got a series on solar, solar photovoltaics, uh, and I believe the first one in that series talks about PWM and how you apply it with an inverter. And you can check that series, and you can see uh, the implementation of it for a uh, solar plant. Okay, so what is pulse width modulation? Um, generally, if I want to understand something, the first thing I consider is the name, and what does the name mean? Well, pulse width modulation implies that you are modulating or controlling the width of a pulse. And that really is basically what you're doing. Now, to illustrate that, I have started up uh, a software application that engineers use called MATLAB. And this is a, an element in MATLAB called Simulink. And you can see here on the left, I've drawn out a circuit and I've included some stuff in here. And on the output, I've added a scope. And you can see this window over here is the output of the scope. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a simulation and we're going to look at pulse width modulation. OK, so I'm going to go up here and press the run button. And you can see I have a repeating what's called a square wave. And this uh, is on the bottom axis. This is the time axis. And this uh, y up and down axis is the y axis. And this is the value of the uh, repeating square wave. And you can see it repeats every 0.1 seconds. If you look down here on the bottom, it goes from 0 to 0.1. Half of it is positive, and then it goes to 0. And then it repeats, positive and then 0, out to 0.2, and then out to 0.3. So it's a repeating square wave with a period which is, in this case, 0.1 seconds. The period is the duration of each repeating element. OK, so I have a square wave that's repeating every tenth of a second, and the value it goes between 1 and 0. All right, this is a, a repeating square wave. OK, now uh, I've got in here, if you look into this uh, Simulink circuit, I've got a slider over here. And it can vary from 0 to 1. And what this is doing is this is going to vary the width of those pulses. So I'm bringing it down. I'm at 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And you can see as the slider gets less, it goes down to uh, the width of this pulse, of each repeating pulse, gets less and less. And as I bring it back up to 0 0.5, here we are at 0 0.5. And I'm going to bring it up to 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and up to 1, and you can see it's always positive, all right? Now, if I bring it back to 0.5, what that's telling me is 50% of this repeating wave, square wave, is at 1, and 50% is at 0. If I bring it up to 0.9, then 0.9, or 90% of this repeating wave, is at 1, and only 10% is at 0. And if I bring it down to 0 0.2, 20% of this is at 1, and 80%, the remainder, is at 0. So I am defining the width of these pulses by this slider value. And it's basically like a, a DC value that I'm varying to, to convert to a varying pulse width. Okay. Now, this value, this constant value that I'm changing, uh, defines what's called the duty cycle. And it's a fancy word, but all the, that word means, or all that phrase means, duty cycle, is the percent of time that the wave is high or positive. In this case, 1. So I'm at 0 0.5. 50% of the time is at 1, which means I'm at 50% duty cycle, or 0.5. And if I bring it up to 0 0.9, 
I'm at 90% duty cycle because 90% of the times it's at 0.1. And if I bring it to 0.3, it's 30% duty cycle because only 30% of the time is it high at 1, okay? So again, a fancy term, and it just means uh, the extent to which, the amount of time, the percent of time that you are at high versus low, okay? So that's the duty cycle. So I'm using this uh, slider to vary the duty cycle, okay? I am modulating the width of the pulse, which means I am varying the duty cycle, okay? Now, why would we do this? Well, this is a very, very popular uh, technique in uh, being able to vary the power you supply to a load because it's a very f efficient way to do it. So it's used in power supplies, it's used in motor controllers, it's used in a lot of uh, applications that are used to vary power. So now you might be wondering, well, how do we do that? How do we convert a varying DC value into this more complex pulse width modulation? Okay, well, um, let me switch off this um, this pulse width modulated wave, and let me switch on a constant value. And this is the value that we are varying with the slider. You can see it goes up to 1, and it goes down to 0. And here it's at 0. 0.5. So I'm basically, this is what the slider is doing. It's varying this constant value. Now, let me also add what's called a sawtooth wave. And you can see this blue dashed line defines what looks like a saw blade, a triangular repeating waveform, okay? And it increases up to one and then goes back to zero and then increases up to one. And again, it's the same period or the same duration of the repeating pulses. It's 0.1 seconds, okay? So every 0.1 seconds it repeats. So now what I'm doing is I am varying the constant and if you think about it, maybe you'll start to see how you can generate a pulse width modulated waveform using these two signals, okay? I've got a simple varying DC, and if I compare that value of the varying DC with the value at any point on the uh, sawtooth waveform, you might start to think, oh, that's how I can convert this varying DC into a modulated uh, pulse width, okay? A varying duty cycle. So if you look, we'll put it at 0.5. So basically, 50% of the time, this varying DC, this red line, the value of that is greater than the value of the uh, sawtooth wave. And 50% of the time, the value of the sawtooth wave is greater than the value of the red line. So if I increase it up to 90%, you can see, okay, now only maybe 10% of the time the sawtooth is greater, and all the rest of the time the red line is greater. So, huh, maybe I can use this. I can have a simple comparator to compare the value and use that as a conversion to a pulse width modulated waveform. And if I turn on the pulse width modulated waveform, and vary it, you can see, oh, okay, that's how you do it. You compare the value of the fixed uh, sawtooth wave with the varying DC, the red line, and the output of that will be this varying pulse width modulated waveform, okay? So really, it's, it's no magic. It's basically just comparing two values to get a varying pulse width or a varying duty cycle, okay? So in a nutshell, that is pulse width modulation of a waveform. So of course you don't want to just use a varying DC value to, to generate your pulse width modulated waveform. Um, you're probably going to want to use something like a sine wave. And in this case, you see this red sine wave that I'm using to generate this pulse width modulated waveform, this uh, solid yellow uh, PWM signal, and basically it's doing the same thing, but it's using a sine wave as a controller instead of a, a DC value. And you can see it's 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 doing the comparison that I talked about before. 
you're taking the value of the red sine wave, comparing it to the value of the dashed uh, sawtooth wave, and comparing it. And where, like in this case, where the red sine wave is greater than the value of the dashed uh, sawtooth, the value of the output uh, PWM signal is, is 1, and where the value of the uh, sawtooth is greater than the red sine wave, the value is 0. And in between, where they're about 50-50, you can see the duty cycle is about 50-50. And you can see the sine wave moving and changing the output PWM signal. So that's basically what you're going to get with a sine wave. You're going to get a PWM that's got a, you know, at the peak of the sine wave, you're going to get a maximum duty cycle. And at the minimum of the sine wave, you're going to get a, uh, a very short, small duty cycle. Okay? So um, that's the basics of pulse width modulation. If you're interested in getting into much more detail and seeing how you apply this in the real world, in a uh, piece of equipment. Um, I've got uh, another video in my photovoltaic uh, inverter series. The uh, part one of that series talks about how you use this pulse width modulation in, in making a inverter for a solar photovoltaic system. And it's very common to use this um, PWM system control the power output of a solar photovoltaic system. So I encourage you to look at that part one and even go into the other parts of that series if you want to get more into um, some real world applications. So I hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.